This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with some bad news from Tesla, which laid off more than 10% of its staff at the start of this week. The layoffs announced in a company-wide email blamed rapid growth within the company and emphasised a need for cost reductions and increased productivity. Among staff laid off were those working on Tesla's NV9 project, the code name for the long-promised $25,000 EV. While Reuters reported two weeks ago that Tesla was cancelling that project, Elon Musk refuted it. But Tesla has technically postponed rather than cancelled the project, and Elon Musk has said to be put all of Tesla's metaphorical eggs in the robo-taxi basket. Tesla has promised to unveil said vehicle on August 8th. Among those who left Tesla this week were Tesla's senior VP of powertrain and energy and Tesla's policy chair. Not helping this news are reports that Tesla sent incorrect severance package emails to laid off staff. Tesla stock has fallen this week by more than 13% in the last five days at the time of filming. GMC officially launched its sibling to the Chevrolet Silverado EV this week, the 2024 GMC Sierra EV Denali. The first version to break cover is the 2024 Sierra EV Denali Edition 1, which features a claimed 440 miles, 708 kilometres of range from its massive battery pack, a pack which hasn't confirmed a size, but which we are guessing is in excess of 200 kilowatt hours in capacity. Built on the same Ultium platform as the Hummer EV and Silverado EV, the Sierra EV Denali features the same kind of specs, including 800 volt, 350 kilowatt DC fast charging, four wheel steer, crab walk and 10,000 pound, four and a half metric tonne towing capacity. Deliveries start this summer with prices close to $100,000. From a vehicle that few can afford to some good news about affordability, namely a new study from Vincentric has confirmed what many of us know. EV ownership can save you money. Looking at all of the electric vehicles on sale in North America today, it examined depreciation, fees and taxes, financing, fuel, cost, maintenance and repairs, and for an assumption of 15,000 miles per year over five years of ownership, shows that 49% of all 2024 model year EVs are cheaper to own over a five-year period compared to similar internal combustion engine models. That is fantastic news, but it should come with a caveat because last year the exact same study found that 52% of EVs were cheaper than comparable gasoline vehicles over a five-year period. We learned this week that the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board is investigating a second fatal accident involving Ford's Blue Cruise hands-free driver assistance system. A few weeks ago, we told you about the first fatality that took place on February 24th, in which a stationary Honda CRV was hit late at night near Austin, Texas, by a Mustang Mark E being driven with Blue Cruise active. A second collision early on the morning of March 3rd when a Ford Mustang Mark E hit two stationary cars on Interstate 95 in Philadelphia killed two people. While Blue Cruise is suspected in the second incident, the NTSB has not yet completed its initial investigation at the time of writing this script and filming the show. If your car has an advanced level two system, I should remind you it requires full supervision at all times. Mercedes-Benz has unveiled a refresh to its e-sprinter lineup in North America for the 2025 model year, expanding options 
and choice in an increasingly competitive market. Most noticeable is the inclusion of a new lower-priced 81 kilowatt hour usable capacity battery pack, which, along with a choice of different wheelbases and roof heights, allows the e-Sprinter to more directly compete against Ford's e-Transit. Mercedes-Benz also notes that the smaller capacity battery pack allows for larger payload capacity when you compare it to the 113 kilowatt hour battery pack option, meaning that for many last mile delivery companies, the smaller capacity battery pack is a smarter choice. The new model year starts at 61,250 US dollars. This week, we learned that the US government is readying itself to reintroduce import tariffs on Chinese-made solar technology, and now lawmakers want the same for Chinese-made EVs. This week, Senate Democrat Sherrod Brown penned a public letter to President Joe Biden calling on the executive branch to ensure that the US takes steps to ensure that Chinese-made electric vehicles are not allowed into the US. Citing evidence from investigations into price fixing in other countries, Brown stated that Chinese EVs, highly and unfairly subsidized by the Chinese government, risk not only decimating domestic EV production, but also posed potential security risks, giving the PRC access to U.S. citizens' personal data. We should expect more from Senator Brown and other lawmakers on the matter in coming months. In the same week that it denounced substantial layoffs at facilities around the world, Tesla is looking for shareholder support to pay Elon Musk an estimated 55 billion US dollars. Back in January, a judge in Delaware, where Tesla is currently incorporated, said that Elon Musk's 2018 compensation package, worth an estimated 55 billion dollars, couldn't be awarded after siding with a shareholder that had sued Tesla and Musk for misrepresenting the original package to shareholders. Thusly, Musk, and by extension Tesla, now wants shareholder approval to move Tesla's state of incorporation to Texas from Delaware, and then for shareholders to reapprove Musk's compensation package. Tesla has made a new website called supportteslavalue.com where it makes its case for a double yes vote. Lucid has made some substantial changes to its Lucid Air Grand Touring for the 2024 model year, including faster charging, a heat pump, and even more range. As confirmed midweek, the new version of the Lucid Air Grand Touring, which has a starting price just shy of 110,000 US dollars, manages an EPA estimated 516 miles, that's 830 kilometers per charge. Some of that range improvement comes from giving the Lucid Air Grand Touring the same high-efficiency heat pump found in the Lucid Air Sapphire, along with tweaks to motor design, controller and battery pack. The Lucid Air Grand Touring now has battery preconditioning as well, which reduces the time you'll spend at a charging station, if you can afford the car. The Lucid Air Grand Touring might have an impressive range per charge, but if you're in the market for a more affordable EV, Hyundai Motor Group comes out top for efficiency. As data from the US Department of Energy and EPA and reported on by Electrek shows, six out of the 10 most efficient EVs on sale in North America today are made by Hyundai or Kia, with the Ionic 6 long range rear wheel drive coming out top, its standard range sibling in third place, and a whole host of other Hyundai Kia vehicles in the mix. Lucid occupies second and fourth place with its Lucid Air Pure rear wheel drive fitted with 19 and 20 inch wheels respectively, while the BMW i4 eDrive 35 with 18 inch wheels and Polestar 2 single motor with 19 inch wheels come in sixth and ninth place respectively. Tesla, once the efficiency top 10 king, is now off the list completely. Tesla has reportedly halted all deliveries of its Cybertruck after an issue was discovered with the accelerator pedal that could lead affected vehicles to suddenly suffer unintended acceleration. 
And in the time between us filming the show and editing it, that halt has become an official recall after multiple reports that the accelerator cover on the Tesla Cybertruck can slip and become stuck in a seam in the driver's side footwell, causing the accelerator to remain depressed and the vehicle to continue to accelerate. Given that some versions of the Cybertruck can do the stoplight sprint in under three seconds, this recall, of which just under 4,000 Cybertrucks are affected, is a top priority for the company. Multiple Cybertruck owners reported delays in taking over their new vehicles prior to the recall, and several people are citing issues with the accelerator as being the cause given for the delay. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are, and you live in Ataroa, you should very much check out our buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with tons of information to help you pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, charging and so much more. So follow the link below and start that journey today. As I have said multiple times before on this channel, EVs keep getting greener and greener because the electrical grid they charge from also keeps getting greener. This week, we had a fantastic demonstration of that when data from the Global Wind Energy Council showed that around the world, records were broken by the global wind industry last year. In its just published Global Wind Report 2024, it detailed 117 gigawatts of new wind generation added to the global grid last year, up 50% year on year. Wind generation increased around the world, with only North America and Europe lagging behind on previous years. But the top five markets for new wind installations? China, the US, Brazil, Germany and India. And finally, the more EV drivers are in the world, the more confrontations we're starting to see at charging stations as people behave in inconsiderate or inappropriate ways. This week, we heard the story of a Rivian driver who had the police called on them, not for being antisocial, threatening, or indeed anything nefarious, but rather for daring to use a Tesla supercharger to charge their new Rivian R1S. Rivian and Ford EV owners have been able to use the Tesla supercharger network in the US now for several months, courtesy of special NACs to CCS adapters. But according to the driver in question, some Tesla owners haven't gotten the message. And one irate Tesla owner, after pointing to the Tesla vehicle charging only sign at a supercharger in California, got a little aggressive with them and called the police. The Rivian owner, whose CCS to NACS adapter wasn't playing nice, decided to disengage and just find somewhere else to charge. But seriously, folks, please don't be dicks to each other. I mean, you're not in primary school anymore. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I do go, though, make sure that you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, it is time to switch to Altero's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful. I will be back soon, but in the meantime, be sure to check out other great content on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's always driving something fun, and he gets to drive vehicles that I only get to read about. I'm kind of jealous. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the week. Kakite! See you next time.